Hi, this is Wen from Periodic Lab. Today we're going to make a very customizable DIY Lorat, Lorat? I'm not sure, <laughs> necklace tutorial. It's, it's pretty easy and straightforward. So here are the supplies, some of them that you will need. First, we're going to start off with some wire. These will be for the connectors as well as for the nugget part that we're going to make. Next is the wire cutter. These um, are really handy for cutting, but you might not necessarily need them if you have the needle nose plier, the three type kind. I got this one at Walmart for $2. The round part is what helps um, make the jump rings and also I think they're called eyelet, whatever. Um, we'll be making them throughout. And next we are also going to need some beads. I like the beads to kind of match my pendant. And in this case, all of these I've gotten at Michael's. If you take the 40% coupon combined, like you can get it down to a pretty reasonable price. Um, my dog just like sniffing it, she will not eat it. So I brought these from Michael's. And then in addition to those beads, we are going to need some spacer beads. These will become your neutral color beads. I like to pick metallics. In this case, silver, that is the same color as my uh, chain. This will also apply to the wire that you're using. I personally try to find one that's closest to my chain. In this case, it's kind of like a darker silver. When it all comes together, it's nicer when everything matches. So let's get started. First thing we need to make an eye pin. We use the pliers and you just kind of turn it around to the circular part of the pliers. It takes a little practice, but it's really not that difficult. Um, and this one actually has the cutting thing in the middle, so you don't actually need the other tool, but you can see later why we might want an actual individual cutter. Now we're gonna start adding the beads. I like to put the spacer bead, um, in this case, a silver one, and then adding the facet beads. Um, anything that has like these little ridges and that kind of colors are called facet beads. Uh, it's great to know that if you are wanting to buy these online, Etsy is a good place to find them. In my case, I put three on there and I'm going to close it off with the same way that we made the eyelet in the beginning. And this is when the actual um, clipper, wire clippers come in handy just because it's kind of hard to get it with the three in one tool. So now that we made one, it's not perfect looking, but basically you just want two eye hole holes. And right now putting them next to each other, it seems like they match. We're going to make a bunch more. That process takes a while, but you know, watch a TV show or something in between. It works quite well. Now, the next thing we're going to do is start adding them to the chains. So basically our goal here is to make the chains kind of a customizable um, with bead alternating every inch or two. It's your discretion how you want to do it. Um, I like to eye it, but if you have like to measure it out, I would suggest doing that as well. Um, whatever your works for you. And then you just add it on as you would a jump ring using your tools, just pinching, pulling open the hole and then closing it again, kind of like that way it's the way you connect it on there. If you look at chains closely, you can see that's how they're connected to each other as well. There probably is a better way to do this, but I'm self-taught and I just figured it as, out as I go by observing what jewelry looks like. The great thing about this also is I like customability. So we're going to repeat this process until we're satisfied and we get a whole chain length that we want. Now, I didn't want to waste my beads on the back of my neck, and plus I don't like beads there, so I did keep a portion of it just kind of empty I did, and made sure that anything in the front are the beads that you see. Now, next, what we're going to do is try to figure out where we want the La Rot to start and stop, but first we need to put the pendant on, on one of the ends of this whole uh, necklace. So with that, we're going to um, add the pendant in the very end. I tried it with the wire, but actually a jump ring makes it look better. So a jump ring are pretty cheap as well if you just Walmart or online, anything. They're quite useful if you're looking into getting to jewelry um, making. So now that this part is done, I'm going to figure out where and how long I want the Lorat to be or whatever this part of it's called, and then just connect um, the other kind of naked end of my necklace chain to um, the other side of it. So <laughs> that's a great explanation. So it's a close up of, um, we're gonna close up the necklace and I just took one of the connectors um, ring part and then just connected the end of the other 
end of the necklace to it. So when you see the final product and you observe it, you'll actually be able to break it down quite easy. Um, so now we have something that we actually we actually can already put over our heads because this you can make necklaces enough to fit over your head. Later on, I will show you how to put it on if you don't want to do that. You want to put a lobster clasp on it or something. But so the next thing we're going to do is make a nugget necklace because I noticed that with Lorat's, like it looks better if you have something that chains it across instead of drooping it down it makes it more predominant. So we're going to do the same thing we did before, but this time just add more beads. Play around with this. Um, just cut off the wire that we had previously. And I find that wire is better to buy than the than the individual packs of eyelet like wires. The only w exception I have that to that is the flat head wires um, for earrings, just because I don't know how to make those. But the same principle applies here as we did for the connectors. You add them on and then you make, you close it up by making another loop and leave yourself some space and clip it right enough where you can kind of make a circle for yourself and then use it to twirl it around the circular part of it. I apologize if I'm not getting the terms right. I'm, I'm really self-taught, so I just want to make things custom. So now for this part, after we made the nugget, what we're going to do is add it to our necklace. And visually speaking, I just place it where I think it would fit nicely. This is something you can definitely play around with. So we're going to place and attach the nugget to the necklace. This is the same concept. Honestly, a lot of chain based jewelry is just linking things to each other, either through um, jump rings or through wires or any version of that. And it's really about a combination of either making knots or making uh, eyelet holes and that kind of stuff. So we're going to open this back up and it's and then hook it up to one side and then do the same to the other. And for me, I just played around with this a little bit until and put it on and took it off until it looked even. And I would recommend doing the same. Now, uh, a thing about the facet beads, I must warn you, is that they do come in different sizes. And I've ordered stuff before where I thought it was a certain size. It came much smaller. So I would highly recommend going to the store and figuring out numbers before. So optional, you can add a lobster clasp with a jump ring on the back. If your necklace is long enough to fit over your head and you don't feel it's necessary, this you can skip this step. Personally, um, I just like doing it sometimes because I like to add extender or just um, give me an option to kind of vary the length of my necklace. And sometimes I have actually have a very big head, so a lot of times things that fit over normal people's head just doesn't fit over mine. So lobster class is pretty standard. Basically, you just put a jump ring and then you use it to hook it, like link it between the chain and the lobster class. And if you look at it, that's all you have to do is just move wires around to do that accordingly. And then on the other side, make sure your uh, the chain that you cut, make sure you have a clean chain that isn't just broken from your cutting and then just add another jump ring on to it um, or extension kind of chain with it. Sometimes the holes are kind of tricky. So a lot of just using the pliers really help and just practicing or just playing around with it in general. It's not very difficult. It's more just um, seeing pieces that you already like that you see online or in even in store and just customizing it to what you want. My goal with tutorials is to teach you a couple new skills and a couple new ways, just to, techniques to think of making jewelry. And ultimately, if you like that and like to just learn more about making jewelry or a lot of DIY stuff, please give this a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more of this video, um, videos or ask for certain necklaces types that you want me to make, I can definitely recreate them for you so you can customize it for yourself. This is Wen from Periodic Lab, and I hope you enjoyed this, and I will see you next time.